Today, I'm gonna to be talking about the top 12 mistakes that first time moms make and how to avoid them. Pregnancy and childbirth can be overwhelming, but with some guidance, you can make the process less stressful. Hey, it's Morgan, and welcome to the Passable Parent Channel. I've been a pediatric nurse for the past 10 years specializing in early childhood development, and I'm also a mom. Before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn notifications on so you don't miss out on any future videos. And make sure to comment down below if you have any questions. I'd love to hear from all of you. Thank you so much for your support. The first mistake that first time moms make is staying with the first OBGYN that they visit, whether or not they liked them. It's important to remember that this is a relationship that you will have for the next nine months and beyond. Take the time to find an OBGYN who you trust and who makes you feel comfortable and someone that you can communicate openly with. Don't be afraid to try out more than one OBGYN to see who is the best fit for you. And it's important that you learn to advocate for yourself now and find that right person because soon you're gonna be advocating for this baby who relies solely on you. The second mistake that many first time moms make is focusing on that nursery so much and all the items that they can buy for the baby. And while that's important to provide your baby a safe and comfortable space and to have the essential items that you need, it's also equally important to have a plan in place for after the baby arrives. This includes things like meal planning, lining up help from family and friends, and having a postpartum care plan in place. Make sure to check out my video on postpartum essentials and some tips and tricks for postpartum if you haven't already. I'll make sure to link it up here and down in the description box below for you. The third mistake that I see is freaking out and timing contractions as soon as you feel them. While it's understandable to feel anxious, it's important to try to remain calm and not just jump to conclusions. It's more important to rule out whether or not this is false labor and to call your OBGYN if you have any concerns before jumping in the car to go to the hospital. Mistake number four is telling everyone that you are in labor. This kind of goes along with mistake number three. Telling everyone that you're in labor as soon as it starts can add a lot of pressure to the situation and stress. Remember that labor can start and then stop, and it's really important to focus on yourself and your baby and your needs during this time. Only let the people know who need to know to alleviate the pressure of answering so many messages on your phone. Be present so that you can truly advocate for yourself during this process. A major mistake that so many first time moms make is not doing enough tummy time with their newborns, starting as soon as they come home from the hospital. Tummy time is important for your baby's physical development and starting early can help them build and strengthen those neck and core muscles. It's important to work up to a few minutes of tummy time a few times each day and to make it a regular part of your baby's routine. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I have a ton of videos on tummy time and how to make it easier for your baby, lots of tips and tricks and more coming. Make sure you're subscribed because tummy time is one of the number one things that new parents struggle with because a lot of babies just don't like it but I have some really great tips for you, so make sure you're subscribed. Mistake number six, not seeking help when needed. Many first time moms feel the need to do everything themselves, and I'm totally guilty of this myself. I did this myself, which can lead to burnout and exhaustion. It's really important to know that it's okay to ask for help, whether it's from a partner, a friend, a spouse, or a family member. You also can consider hiring a postpartum doula or a lactation consultant if needed. Another alternative is to create a support system before your due date and ask for help when you need it. Don't hesitate to reach out to your doctor and midwife if you have any concerns or questions. Mistake number seven that I see so many first time moms doing and that we're all guilty of is comparing your baby to others. It's really easy to fall into the trap of comparing your baby to others and their development, but every baby develops at their own pace. Comparing can just lead to unnecessary worry and stress. Trust your instincts in your baby's development. Focus on the progress that your baby is making rather than comparing them to others. And if you have any concerns, your pediatrician is the best resource for this. And if you're not liking what your pediatrician is saying or you don't feel like your concerns are being addressed or heard, I strongly encourage you to seek out other measures, other pediatricians, other trusted health experts in pediatrics to make sure that your concerns are being addressed. It's really important that you advocate for your baby. But again, comparing yourself to others really can be such a thief of joy and every baby progresses at their own pace. And there are a lot of red flags and things to look out for. And you can check out all my other videos on many of these topics to sort of help you determine whether or not it's time to call a pediatrician or be concerned. Mistake number eight, 
is neglecting self-care. Many first-time moms put all their focus on taking care of their baby and forget to take care of themselves. However, neglecting self-care can lead to burnout and negative mental health outcomes. A great alternative to this is making self-care a priority, whether it's taking a nap, taking a walk, or taking a bath. Remember that taking care of yourself is crucial for taking care of your baby. Mistake number nine is not planning for the unexpected. Birth can be so unpredictable, I can't stress that one enough. And it's important to have a plan in place for the unexpected. Many first time moms focus only on their birth plan and forget to consider backup plans in case things don't go as planned. An alternative to this would be to create a birth plan that includes backup plans in case of emergency. It's also really important to have a plan in place for postpartum care and to know what resources are available to you in case you need extra support. So make sure you're subscribed because I'd like to be a resource to you and I hope that my videos can really help you out, especially if you're going to be someone who's gonna attempt breastfeeding. I make a lot of videos on that topic because that is such a challenging one for so many first time moms and second time moms. Every baby's different. Mistake number 10 can be comparing yourself to others, not just comparing your baby. That was one of the previous mistakes I talked about, but comparing yourself as a parent to others. Social media and the internet can make it so easy for us to do so. I strongly encourage you to just focus on you and focus on your baby and try to tune out the rest. Mistake number 11 is ignoring your mental health. Pregnancy and postpartum can be a challenging time for many women and it's so important to prioritize your mental health. Many first time moms may not recognize the signs of postpartum depression or postpartum anxiety and may not seek help. So please be aware of this and make sure you have people in your life you can talk to, whether it be a doctor, a friend, a spouse, or a partner. Mistake number 12 is overloading on baby gear. It's easy to get caught up in buying all the latest baby gear and gadgets, but many first time moms end up with way more than they need. So make sure to check out my videos on toys and think gear that actually are geared towards helping your baby develop and progress and meet those milestones because there's so much stuff out there on the market and it's really hard to tell what is actually good for your baby and will promote different skills and what actually can harm them. So make sure you're subscribed and you check out those other videos because there's so much to learn and know. And unfortunately, a lot of companies can use marketing and make false claims that they just don't have a lot of checks and balances against these companies. So it can be really confusing as a consumer to figure out what is the right toys and appropriate gear to buy for your baby. Make sure you're subscribed. And there you have it. Those are the top mistakes that I see a lot of first time moms making and how to avoid them. Remember that pregnancy and childbirth are a journey and it's okay to ask for help and support along the way. By staying informed and being prepared, you can make this experience a positive one for both you and your baby. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.